Hi, my name is Maya. I am the Rico Smart Integration Logic Flow Virtual Subject Matter Expert. Rico Smart Integration Logic Flow, RSI Logic Flow for short, is the RSI solution for document workflows. It makes the customer work more efficient, and it is very easy to set up. In this video, I explain the general operations required to start setting up RSI Logic Flow. Let's get started. Creating application. To use RSI Logic Flow, I first create a new application. I log in to the Rico Smart Integration site with my administrator account and switch to admin mode. Then I go to application settings. I click on the add an application button, select RSI Logic Flow and click on the next button. On the next screen, we can set the name and icon of the application. In my case, I name it, scan invoice, and keep the icon. It is better to give an application name and icon that identifies the functionality of the application. Now a new application has been added. To access the configuration for my new application, I click on its button. Functions and tabs. To configure my RSI logic flow application, I have to select several functions. The possible functions are organized into five tabs. The source tab contains the selection of input methods for the documents to be processed. MFP or PC can be selected. The preprocess tab provides the functions to prepare the loaded documents before processing them. Here I can select to split the documents or delete unnecessary blank pages. The extract tab contains functions for analyzing documents and extracting data. The extracted data can be used in the subsequent steps functions. The post-process tab is for actions processes after the extraction, for example to delete cover pages that are no longer needed once the data has been extracted. At last, the root tab defines how the process documents will be stored or sent. By simply selecting and configuring the functions I need, I can create an application that automates the daily tedious document processing routine. User Access Limits With RSI Logic Flow, not only I can define the document workflow, but also we wait the end user will be able to interact with that workflow. I can decide which settings are open to the user, and which ones are not. Let me explain how to set this up, for example with the MFP scan function. On each setting, I can set a default value. In my case, I select two-sided in original sides because the documents to be processed are mostly double-sided. I will avoid the users to change this setting most of the time. However, users sometimes scan single-sided documents, so I leave that setting open for them to change to one-sided. Now, I would like to fix the resolution to 300 dpi and not allow users to change it, as 300 dpi is a good compromise between scan quality and file size. When I hover the mouse cursor over each function, an eye and a lock icon appear. Clicking on this eye icon and closing it is removing the setting from the user interface. The users will not see or be able to change this setting and the display will be simpler. I also fix the document size to A4 vertical. But in this case, I want to let users know that A4 vertical is selected to avoid any mistake. I leave the eye icon open and only close the lock icon. This setting lets the users know that this application needs to scan A4 vertical documents. However, since it is locked, the user cannot change its value. I close the eyes on all other settings, as they are fixed and do not need to be informed to users. The MFP's runtime display is then simple and minimalist, which avoid any user confusion. So far I have described how to limit end-user access on a per-function basis, but I can also control access on a per-application basis. To do this, set the general settings at the bottom of each app's settings screen. Open the Permission Settings section and find a setting called App Usage Permission. By default, all users is selected, meaning that all users can use this app. There are two other options here, and by selecting Allow Users Only, 
I can select which users are allowed to use this app. This means that the app will not be visible to anyone other than the users selected here. The other option, Allow Groups Only, allows selecting by group. This way, any future changes made in RSI's group management will impact the access to this app. This is an efficient way to maintain the access control. Failure Notice Now, let me explain the Failure Notice section. This setting is used to define the email notification if an error happens and RSI logic flow fails to process or save documents, for any reason. At the bottom of the settings screen, I can access the panel called General Settings, which contains the Failure Notice section. It is very simple, I just have to set the email address and the subject of the notification email. For the email address, it is recommended to enter the email address of the administrator who manages this app, and for the subject field, it is a good idea to enter a subject that makes it easy to understand that the notification is from this app. In my case, invoice scan, error. Limitations RSI logic flow has some limitations. I will explain the most important ones. Please refer to the limitations section of the online manual to see all up-to-date limitations. The URL is here. Let's have a look at the end user experience on the MFP. If the application is using data extraction and the confirm now option is used to immediately check the extracted data, the number of document pages is limited to a maximum of 10 pages. If you want to process in batches, you need to run the application multiple times so that the total is less than 10 pages, or use the Confirm Later option to check the data using the web app. It is anyway not recommended to stay on the MFP panel for a long validation. In such a case, using the confirmation list and releasing the MFP will always be a better option. About the end user experience, it is important to notice that the confirmation on screen is displayed only if there is a data extraction function, otherwise the only option is to send the document immediately. In such case, the routing UI will also be skipped. The last important limitation I want to mention is related to SharePoint. When storing metadata with SharePoint specified as root, the SharePoint metadata type, multiple line of text, is not supported. Only single line of text can be used. This is all for a general instruction on how to use RSI logic flow. If you want to discover more specific use cases, please have a look at my other videos. See you soon!